things more useless than a gas mask that leaks. Masks leak for two reasons. Either the mask isn't properly fitted to your face, or it has become defective through dampness or bad handling. On being issued a mask, you should first remove the adhesive tape from the air intake holes of the canister and then fit the mask to your face. Begin by loosening all the head harness straps. Then put the mask on your face, holding it in place with one hand. With your other hand, center the head harness pad well down at the back of your head. There are three pairs of harness straps. First, tighten the middle pair of straps directly above your ears, one at a time. Pull up about the same amount on both straps so that the tension will be the same. Then check the head harness pad again. The mask should fit comfortably and not too tightly. Now do the same with the two top straps. Pull each one up approximately the same amount. Adjust the bottom pair of straps together. Remember the mask shouldn't press too hard against the face. Just fit snugly. Check the mask by closing off the hoses as close to the canister as possible and sucking in your breath. If the mask is correctly adjusted, no air should enter and the mask tends to collapse. If the air enters, there is a leak somewhere. Seat the mask to your face again. Work the face piece up towards the top of the face. Tighten the two top straps. Then recheck the mask. If the mask is defective, take it to your chemical warfare officer. He will issue you a new one. When you're issued your mask, you become personally responsible for its care. You should inspect your mask once a week. First, inspect the carrier. Examine the shoulder strap for cuts or broken buckles. Then examine the rest of the carrier. Make sure the bag is not torn. That the snap fasteners are working. And very important, that you have your antidim. Now inspect the mask. The easiest way to do this is to follow the flow of air through the mask. As air enters through the canister, first inspect that. Examine the canister for punctures, dents, rusty spots or broken seams. Shake it to make sure it does not rattle. If it does, show it to your chemical warfare officer. Next, examine the hoses one at a time. Make sure the hose is not cracked where it joins the canister. Then stretch it, examining the hose in small sections for holes.
Lastly, examine the connections between the face piece and the hose. Afterwards, inspect the other hose. Now inspect the face piece. Stretch it to see if there are any holes or tears, particularly where there are connections. Make sure the lenses are not scratched or fogged. Check the diaphragm assembly to see if the plastic discs are properly in place and are not torn. See if the assembly is properly attached to the face piece. Also inspect the inside. Check the outlet valve. See if there are any holes in it. If it is stuck together, massage it open. Go over the head tab attachments. See if the straps are still elastic. Make sure the canister clip is properly fastened. The chemical warfare officer is responsible for the protection of his unit. At least once a month, there will be inspection of all masks and a quick check to make sure that the men are able to handle them properly. Before giving your mask to the officer for inspection, put on the mask. Check the fit. Put on your headpiece and then fasten the carrier. Test for gas before removing your mask. The officer will inspect your mask carefully before returning it to you. Then replace the mask in the carrier. There is only one final test for a mask. Will it give protection in the presence of real gas? The squad is sent into a gas chamber and gas is released. If the masks fit correctly, there will be no bad effects. If you haven't checked your mask carefully enough, you will find out now. There are eight simple rules to remember for taking care of your mask. Keep your mask dry. Keep water away from the mask. It cakes the chemicals in the canister and rots the carrier. Put nothing in carrier but anti-gas equipment. Don't use your carrier to carry extra gear. It forces the face piece out of shape. This is your anti-gas equipment. Nothing else belongs in your carrier. Keep your carrier clean. Don't let your carrier get covered with oil, grease, or dirt. It mildews the material. Handle carefully. Your mask is not a pillow or a cushion. Treat it gently. And don't leave your mask in the hot sun or on top of a radiator. You will ruin the rubber.
Don't overstretch head harness. The head harness is elastic, but elastic can be stretched too far. Go easy with it. Replace mask carefully. Don't crowd your mask back into the carrier as though you were stuffing clothes into a trunk. You will break or bend something, and you can't withdraw your mask readily. Inspect frequently. Don't just hang your mask up and forget about it. Take a few minutes off once a week for a checkup. Disinfect properly. At least once a month, disinfect your mask. Hold the canister above the face piece and wash out the interior with a cloth soaked in Navy gas mask disinfectant. Place several drops inside the outlet valve. Let the mask remain moist for about 15 minutes. Then wipe out the inside of the face piece with a clean dry cloth. Let the mask dry thoroughly for at least 30 minutes before it's returned to the carrier. Finally, apply anti-dim to the lenses rubbing in thoroughly. A properly cared for mask may someday save your life. Take care of your mask and it will take care of you.